This is the Youth Bible with Nikki and Pippa Gumble. Day 323, and in today's devotion, Divine Connections. We see that we need to have divine connections to God, divine connections to a healthy community, and also a divine connection through the Holy Spirit. And we see this in all of our passages for today. So get a notebook, maybe write some notes about how you can have divine connections. God has divine connections lined up for your life. There is power in connection. Connections lead to life. When a husband and a wife come together, babies are born. When the spirit of a person and the spirit of God come together, new birth takes place. When brothers and sisters come together in unity, God commands his blessing. When the disciples came together on the day of Pentecost, there was an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The devil fears connection. His ultimate aim is to cut you off from God and each other. He tries to split marriages, to split friendships, to divide churches, to divide denominations, and to isolate people. Although our culture is more connected than ever before through the internet, phones, and social media, People are more isolated and lonely than ever. In 586 BC, Ezekiel had a vision of a battle scene. He saw Death Valley. The valley was full of bones, bones that were very dry because they had separated. They were scattered, fragmented, divided, cut off, abandoned, and therefore dried up. The people of God were in exile and had been scattered by the enemy. They were saying, Our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. God asks Ezekiel, Can these bones live? The answer is yes, yes, yes. From Psalm 129 But the Lord is righteous. He has cut me free from the cords of the wicked. Divine connection to God. Do you sometimes feel kicked around by the enemy? Everything seems to be going wrong. You seem to be losing. You're experiencing the oppression of the enemy. But victory rests with the Lord. The psalmist says, They've kicked me around ever since I was young. Their plowmen plowed long furrows up and down my back. Then God ripped the harnesses of the evil plowmen to shreds. Jesus has made victory possible for you through his death and resurrection, which connects you to God. Lord, help me to stay connected to you in spite of all the attacks. New Testament from James 3 Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings, who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, Do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere, peacemakers who sow in peace. Reap a harvest of righteousness. Divine connection in a healthy community. Dry bones can live again, 
as the bones reconnect, you can develop a healthy, robust community that lives right with God and enjoy the results. However, there are conditions which the writer of this letter, James, sets out. He continues to warn about the tongue, especially for those of us who teach. Teaching is highly responsible work. Teachers are held to the strictest standards. It is consoling that he adds, We all stumble in many ways. Certainly I do. The tongue is a powerful little instrument which can do so much good and yet so much harm. It can unite or divide. By our speech, we can ruin the world, turn harmony to chaos, throw mud on a reputation, send the whole world up in smoke, and go up in smoke with it, smoke right from the pit of hell. Relationships, even marriages, often end because of things that have been said or not said. People lose their jobs, their reputation, start arguments, or even wars by their words. Harsh, unjust words have destructive power. With the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who've been made in God's likeness. To curse means to speak evil. To bless means to speak well. Don't speak negatively. Learn to control the tongue so that you speak words of blessing to people and about people. Speak words of life. Your words have tremendous power for connection. You can bring healing, encouragement and edification. Your words can change a person's day or even their life. James goes on to speak of the wisdom that comes from heaven. He writes, Do you want to be counted wise? To build a reputation for wisdom? Here's what you do. Live well. Live wisely. Live humbly. It's the way you live that counts. Get rid of all bitter envy and selfish ambition. They are unspiritual, from the devil, and cause all kinds of disorder and evil practice. However, wisdom from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit impartial and sincere. Peacemakers, who sow in peace, raise a harvest of righteousness. If you live like this, your life will have great influence. This is the hard work of getting along with each other, treating each other with dignity and honour. If you work hard at your relationships with those around you, then you will reap a harvest of righteousness and you will have a huge impact on society. Lord, help me to be a peacemaker who brings about connection, sowing peace and producing a harvest of righteousness. Old Testament from Ezekiel 36 and 37 I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath into you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, This is what the sovereign Lord says, Come, breathe from the four winds, and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life, and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Divine Connection Through the Holy Spirit Hope at last! Dry bones can live! We've read so many prophecies of judgment, but God is about to act. God speaks to his people and says, You're coming home. I'm on your side. Instead of death, there's going to be life, life and more life. How is this going to happen? In this passage, we see three 
divine connectors, the world's greatest wireless connectors. First, the Word of God. The Word of God gives you connection with God and transforms your relationships. Prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the Word of the Lord. In my own life, I was spiritually dry. In fact, I was dead. I had lots of friends, but there wasn't a deep connection. Then I read the New Testament. I heard the word of the Lord. I connected with God and I experienced a far deeper connection with other people. God's promise of restoration is so powerful. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. God can revive things that have been dry and even dead. When the Word of God and the Spirit of God come together, there is resurrection life and the knowledge of God. What is impossible with human beings becomes possible with the power of God. Without God, the church would indeed crumble away, as the world tells us. But with God, these dry bones will live again. Second, the body of Christ. The unity of the church is so important. We need visible signs of this unity, divine connections between different parts of the church and within each local church. This is what Jesus prayed for in John 17. Here, the Lord gives Ezekiel a visual aid using two sticks to communicate the unity God is going to establish. Join them together into one stick so that they will become one in your hand, one king over all of them, one shepherd. This is a foretaste of the unity of the body of Christ. God promises I will be their God and they will be my people. The unity of the church will also lead to the restoration of the city. So will the ruined cities be filled with flocks of people. This vision of restored unity gives me such hope for the church in our city, in our nation and across the world. God never abandons his people and his plans are always ultimately to restore and save us. Third, the Holy Spirit The dry bones had no breath in them, but the Lord said, prophesy to the breath. Come, O breath, and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. No English translation can do justice to the Hebrew word ruach. It occurs 400 times in the Old Testament and is translated in different English words in this passage, breath, wind, and spirit. This spirit brings new life. I am going to open your graves and bring you from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live. This resurrection power lives in you, bringing you new life. The spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you. There's a rattling sound as bones come together, the sound of divine connections forming once again, the sound of God breathing new life into his church by his spirit. The church is a rising giant, a vast army of spirit-filled people full of power, unified in purpose. Lord, would you breathe new life into your people from dry bones, raise up a mighty army so that all nations come to know that Jesus Christ is Lord. Pepper adds, Ezekiel 36, 26. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. There are many things that can harden our hearts. There are battles, struggles, disappointments and heartbreaks. Even too much success can mean that pride creeps in and takes hold. God wants soft hearts that are open and responsive to him. Let's pray. Lord, help me to live well today. Help me to live wisely today. And Lord, help me to live humbly today. I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.